So in this video, we are going to be looking at attributes and weapons in the wonderful game of Elder Scrolls Online. My name's Inwills, and welcome to the In Crowd. So every time I start a new character on Elder Scrolls Online, I go through a basic procedure in my head. And I thought I would share that with you today. So it would give you some understanding if you are a complete newbie to the game. So if you've liked any of this video, then please do not forget to like, comment or subscribe. By doing so, you not only support my channel, but also my dream. So if you have any questions at all, then please do not forget to pop them in the comments below and I will try my best to answer them. So first things first, this is my Breton Templar healer. And the first thing that you have to remember when you're playing um, ESO is that you have some basic attributes that the game runs on. And these are separated into Magicka, health and stamina now health as you can probably imagine is the the num your health pool your hit point pool before you sort of like um die yeah and even though it says zero there my maximum health if you just look underneath it is actually 16,425 so you don't actually have to put points into any of the attributes to actually get a score in them however health tends to be in the um, remit of tanks and so the ones that we're going to actually focus on in this video is going to be magicka and stamina now these are resources that you use in order to fuel your abilities, your spells, your weapons. And it's important to know that weapons, when you do a heavy attack, which is when you hold down your left uh, mouse button, whatever weapons it is, um, actually recharges or gives you back either magicka or stamina, depending on the type of weapon that you are using. So if I go to uh, the weapons over here, you can see that there's various different um, skill lines of weapons. There's two-handed weapons, which includes two-handed swords, two-handed maces, and two-handed battle axes. Um, there are one-handed and shield weapons. So shields, self-explanatory, but you can have one-handed sword, one-handed axe, one-handed mace, and dagger. Dual wield is when you're actually wielding two single one-handed weapons, so two daggers or a mixture, uh, an axe and a sword. And bow is self-explanatory. Uh, yes, you're using a bow. And then you have two sorts of staffs. You have a destruction staff, which is basically um, related to inferno, fire staffs, um, frost staffs or ice staffs, and lightning staffs. And then finally, the final type of staff is a restoration staff a healing staff for want of a better word now each of these weapons have an associated attribute either magicka or stamina that when you're doing the heavy attack it actually replenish some of that attribute so things like a two-handed weapon will replenish um, stamina so will a one hand and shield so will dual wield and so we will will a bow well destruction staffs and it doesn't matter which one you use or a restoration staff when using a heavy attack that will replenish um, the attribute the associated attribute so for example if you are interested in using staffs then you are more likely to make a magic a character because when you're using your staffs, especially on a heavy attack, then you will be replenishing your magicka pool. If you are more interested in two-handed swords or the very popular dual wield and bow combinations, then you will be a stamina character because you on your heavy attacks, you will be replenishing that attribute, the stamina pool that you can use to do your attacks. Now, as you can see from these weapon skills, something like uppercut which is the first um, act 
active ability in two-handed um, skill line, you will notice that it has a casting time, uh, how many targets, one, the range, seven meters, but more importantly, it has a cost. And the cost is actually 3,111 stamina. So you can see that when I'm fighting with a two-handed weapon, I'm going to be using up the stamina to fight with, but at the same time, if I do a heavy attack, I will be replenishing that. Now, if we look at the bow, this is exactly the same. So you can see Snipe actually uses up 3,111 stamina points. But again, with a heavy attack, holding down that left mouse button, I will be replenishing stamina. Now, if I look at the staffs, you can see here that Force Shock, which is the first um, attribute, the first ability in Destruction Staff, that doesn't cost me um, stamina. It calls costs me magicka and so with uh, destruction staff i will be holding the left key left mouse button down to actually generate the um to replenish the magicka pool now the restoration staff is exactly the same and as you can see i'm a healer so you can see that i've got lots of these already um used at up to a level now in order to level a skill you need to ensure that it's on your bar down here now you start off with one weapons bar but at level 15 you get a second one so you can switch between these so you can see this is my bar one and then this is my bar two and I've actually got that key bound to um, a, a mouse button that I can just click and go um, between them now, the important thing is, is that your active abilities in a skill weapon skill line will not increase unless you have them on the bar. So you can see here I have all my um, some of my um, restoration staff abilities on. So while those are on, then these abilities will increase and my total level of the resto staff starting at zero and ending in 50 will also increase. Now, as well as this, what also happens is that each of the abilities have their own level. And you can see here with low slash, it's slowly increasing. Now, as it increases, you gain levels within that um, active ability, and that will make the ability a little bit more powerful. When you get to level four um, in an ability, you get the option to morph it. Now, this plus sign here means that I can gain that skill. Uh, I don't think I have anything to show you that will actually be morphed. Um, oh, yes, here, look, uppercut um, in two-handed. Can you see this symbol here? This actually means that it's ready to be morphed. So I'm actually at level four of this skill. And when I press this, you get the option of two um, choices. I'm just going to move myself a little bit. And you can see the two choices here. So you can see... I can morph it into Dizzy Swing, which slams an enemy with an upward swing, dealing 3,279 physical damage and stunning them for 3.5 seconds. Okay, new effect stuns and knocks back the enemy. Or I could do Wrecking Blow, which does exactly the same, but then grants me Empower for 5 seconds, increasing the damage of my next light attack by 40%. Now, if you want to get really into these morphs, then it is a good idea, I'll just slide myself back over, it's a good idea to go and look at some of the big um, builds. Um, to me, I just tend to go with the one I fancy and I like the look of. It's normally the wrong one, but don't worry because later on you can respec and just change your morphs. Um, you have to have a respec scroll or pay some gold for it as well as the abilities you also have an ultimate and you can see the ultimates here at the top now these ultimates you gain and they come into your slot down here these are more powerful abilities within the weapon tree and you can use these once and then slowly the ability score will the ultimate score sorry will recharge and then you can use them again so it's not all the time but you can use them now in the same way, underneath the um, the um, weapon skill, you can see that there's something called.
passive abilities. So this is my resto staff. You can see I'm up to level 50. Yeah, go me. And here are my passive abilities. And you can see that these add something further. Now, when I first started the game, I just ignored passive abilities altogether. But I was soon informed by my community, the, uh, the in crowd on Twitch, that these are really important. So you can see here Essence Drain that I've got. With Restoration Staff equipped, you gain my major mending for three seconds after completing a fully charged heavy attack, increasing your healing done by 25%. You also heal yourself or nearby ally, uh, ally to a target to the target for 30% of the damage inflicted by the final hit of your fully charged heavy attack. So what this means is that when I'm actually um, healing in a dungeon, because this is my healer, then you will find that I'm doing heavy attacks just to ensure that I get Essence Drain off. And then that's really important. So each one has its own. This is forceful. Your light and heavy attacks damage up to three other nearby enemies for 25 percent of the damage inflicted to the primary skill now as you can see you actually allow to put skill points into these passes as you go up the level within the tree so you can see here for some unknown reason because i totally messed up at the beginning um uh, i've got 29 um levels all um, in two-handed weapons so i would have to start to um, continue to level this up in order to get the final battle rush so that sort of like sums up the first video so to summarize what i would say to you is number one um, decide what kind of weapon or decide which combination you would like to use. And remember, you don't have to have two stamina weapons. You could have a two-handed weapon and a frost staff and mix them up and match. You know, you decide how you want to play. Decide what sort of weapons you want. And then those weapons will be associated with either magicka or stamina. There's one point that I just need to make before I go, and that is there is no minimum range. So for example, you can use bows in melee range and you can use staffs in melee range. They're, they are ranged weapons, but they tend to be, um, you can use them close to or far away as well. So most of my magicka characters, if not all of them, actually carry two staffs, either two destruction staffs or two restoration staffs. Now, just um, a couple of things that I forgot to say while I was recording that. In order to unlock a new skill line for a weapon, all you need to do is um, actually hold it, i.e. utilize it, um, equip it and hit something. And then once you've hit something, that's sort of like um, starts the line off. And remember, you can only advance by having some skills from that um, skill line on your um, your toolbar. The other thing that I would like to say is, or just to reiterate, is please, please, please don't, um, if, if you want to get really into builds, etc., etc., then go off and read some of the wonderful um, web pages out there. Uh, my favorite is Alcast HQ, but you know, anything out there can help you to decide your best build. But my advice to you to start off with is just have a go, swap and change, see what you feel a natural affinity towards, and then that enjoy making your character and playing it. So just again to sum up, decide Magicka or Stamina and then that will lead you to decide which weapons to use. Don't forget to put abilities on your toolbar so you're actually using them and don't forget to invest in passives unless you're like me and you're a complete newbie. And if you have, feel that you've had the wrong decision then please do not worry, you can always go back and change it. And so until next time, please remember to be who you are and say what you think, because the people who mind don't matter and the people who matter don't mind. Have fun, everyone, and I'll catch you all later. And until then, happy ESOing.